content that we hope you'll really like. You're listening to Creating Daily. There's something wrong with you. You know that? Because you and I are like a mullet. Sid is the is the business, so he's the front part of the haircut, and then I'm the party in the back. I think they're hilarious. <laughs> it speaks to me. It's like he's saying what I'm thinking. What is up, everybody? Welcome. Happy Friday. It is Good Friday, so goody, goody Friday. Uh, this is creating daily i'm your host billy thorpe you think it after i do this for like 28 times in a row i'd figure out how to intro the show but i haven't but i'm super stoked about today's show i get my friend sid meadows coming on here in just a second um but before i do i want to remind you to hit the subscribe button so if you're watching on bullhorn or if you're watching on youtube be sure to smash that subscribe button button i'm trying to get more subscribers than i do videos so if you can help me do that that would be awesome and then also if you have a question throughout the conversation that sid and i are going to be having uh talking about digital sales you can put a q colon ask your question on youtube that way we can go back and quickly find it or if you're on bullhorn uh they have a little question section on the app so you can just drop it right there and we'll get to it as we go Um, And if you're feeling really generous, go ahead and hit that share button and share this with somebody that you know who owns a small business uh, or maybe, you know, creates content. Like we're going to kind of go in between the two of talking about how you can make money uh, doing digital sales. So without further ado, I want to invite my friend, the one, the only, and I'm not going to give him too, he's had a, he's had a long week, so I'm not going to give him a hard time, but Sid, unmute yourself right now. Sid Meadows. What's up, my man? How's it going? What's up, Billy? Good to be here with you. Happy Friday, man. It's Good Friday. Uh, it's a holiday in the United States, so uh, it's a great day, my friend. Yeah, man, it's good. Every, everybody's doing good. Everybody in your house doing good now? I know you guys had a rough we, week. We did have a rough week. We've lost track of the days. Everybody's doing well. My daughter is on the mend. Um, she is at the doctor right now having her MRI read, so we already know what the outcome is, but now he's going to give us the plan of what the road to recovery looks like. So thank you for asking. But yeah, we're all good, man. We're glad it's a holiday weekend. I know, man. It's nice. Like here in Puerto Rico, holidays, they shut everything down. So big, yep. all the big box stores and everything are like completely closed. I'm, I, I guess we should, be, should, we should be grateful that the internet's actually working then. They didn't shut yeah. that down on you. Not yet. I mean, <laughs> there's, no, there's no guarantees that the power, the water, or the internet may not just all go away at a moment's notice. Which keeps you, keeps you on your toes. Um, well, man, I'm excited about today's episode. I know we're going to get into some digital sales and what the heck that even is and kind of understanding it a little better. And then as Sid joins me on Fridays, we're going to keep this more of business level talk, but also like there's a lot of creativity in business. So it still is creating daily. Uh, and how do we use some of these tools and, and things that we're doing to grow our companies, grow our businesses? And before we get into the conversation, as always, got a couple little segments. What? It's tool time with Creating Daily. All right, this tool right here is one of my favorite tools. You can't really see it in the picture, though. I'll show it right here in my screen. Hold on. Oh, let me hit the button. I'll show it in my screen. This is a stream deck. Go ahead and focus. Come on, camera. Come on. <laughs> I'm not going to be talking to you about you, camera, if you can't focus. Whatever. Oh, there it went right as I took it away. This is my little stream deck. All these are preloaded scenes for this live stream. So if I push this button, it goes to Sid and I. If I push another button, it goes other places. And this is really awesome tool. If I hit this again, I do this every time. Let me try this. What? It's tool time with Creating Daily. Okay, we don't want to hear that twice, but we did. So this is the stream deck. And if you use like OBS, Twitch, Twitter, Tippy Stream, I mean, any streaming platforms, uh, you can use this tool. And then also you can queue it up. I know people who send automatic emails with this thing, just like queue it up for a, a, a command. You can literally command it to do anything. But I use it for scenes. I use it for bringing in media, um, any audio sources, all the all these things I'm triggering that are going off, Sid. This is what I'm using to do that. I'm programming all this with Ecamm, and I just sit here and push buttons. It's a lot so of it's kind of small. Well, this one is small. So this one's a 15 key. Uh, I think they have like a 32 key and they have, I think they even have like a four key. But I, so I bought the smaller one. That was one of the big mistakes that I made when buying this. I should have bought a bigger one. However, you can program it to like this. You can't see it, but there's a little arrow button and you can keep doing similar to like the Rodecaster Pro sound pads. Yep. You can keep filling in banks of, of stuff. Um, interesting so that's, so that's kind of cool is it just plug right into your computer is that how it works yep through usb 
and then uh, nice. some really smart people made all these things talk, and I don't know how to just go buy one and read the instructions. There you go. That's how you can figure you know, it out. I, I, can't, I can't buy one right now, but I still haven't figured out how to use my roadcaster. So the last thing I need is uh, another tool that has buttons on it to try to figure out how to use. Right? So, geez, dude. Yeah, yeah, man, it's pretty cool, especially for like live streaming and stuff. But anyway, all right, let's head over to our creator highlights. No cooking necessary. No assembly required. It's got to be funky. All right, today's creator highlight is brought to you by One Sheet. So you can go to onesheet.pro slash Billy Thorpe and check out what a One Sheet is. And it's basically just a one sheet with all your information. So think about media kit, kind of like your digital online resume, if you will. Uh, they also at one sheet have a pro directory that you can put your information in. So if you want to get discovered to be a guest on someone else's show or to be, you know, discovered to do a project or something that is totally a part of it. They also have an auto affiliate program so you can share. And the more you share, somebody clicks on it, they buy the pro version you get a little kickback. I've actually made a little bit of money on this already, and I've just been reinstated for a few weeks. And then also it has a really cool ranking system. So the more you share it, the more it grows. So, Sid, I'm going to pass it over to you to tell us a little bit about Judy Fox. Sure. And uh, just for clarity's sake, we want to be sure we want to make sure, Billy, that everybody goes to one sheet dot pro slash Sid Meadows. That's the right URL to actually see what a real one sheet looks no, like. So no. with that, yeah, no. yeah. Just go to wherever it says in the show notes and Sid Meadows will not be there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So let's talk about my friend Judy Fox. Um, and I picked Judy today to be the creator spotlight because she is a LinkedIn rock star. Okay. And, you know, and it ties directly into our conversation today about digital strategy. But Judy's also the founder of the LinkedIn Acceler Business Accelerator. She's a business coach. And I mean, she is all things LinkedIn. And every time I see her going live or doing something, I'm always trying to get there to listen to her because she's always sharing amazing information specifically about how to help you up level your LinkedIn game. So she hosts a regular clubhouse room on Wednesdays at 4.30 p.m. Central Time where it's kind of an ask me anything about LinkedIn. And uh, I was traveling this week and I was listening to it and dude, I wish I had had a notepad and wasn't driving because she dropped so many amazing nuggets of information. And I just think that if you're trying to up level your LinkedIn game, it's important to follow people who are really rock stars and her mm -hmm. using the platform and the, in the right way. And she is the leader of that pack. So wow. um, if your LinkedIn is something that you're focused on, go follow Judy Fox, let her know that I sent you, you can find her on clubhouse. You can also find her on Instagram as well. So she's, but she is a LinkedIn expert. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm not in the LinkedIn world hardly at all besides promoting this show over there. So that's cool to know that it's a powerful platform. So Sid, maybe that leads us into, you know, the conversation here. But before we jump too much into digital sales, what the heck does that even mean for somebody watching going, I don't know what digital sales means? Oh, that's a really, really good question. So, you know, if you're in business, you're in sales. It doesn't matter. Whether you call yourself a salesperson or a business development person, it doesn't matter. If you are in business, you are in sales. And sales, the way that we know it or the way that we knew it prior to 2020 has changed dramatically. And COVID, one of the things that COVID did, Billy, was accelerate the digital world, right? And it put us at a place to use things like Google on a regular basis to find things. And a lot of people think about, when they think about digital, the first aspect they go to is social media. Well, it's more than that, right? And True. then some people think about digital marketing, and digital marketing is a lot of things, including SEO and, you know, keyword search and keyword optimization and all those things. And all those things are important. Don't get me wrong. But it all starts with a strategy. And okay. that's where a digital strategy, a digital sales strategy comes in because you need a strategy to be sure that you're touching all the various different platforms in order to be found by your customer because that's the goal. The goal is to um, seek to be found by your customer rather than continuing to try to find new customers. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So, you know, in my content creation brain, and I did this with a fishing podcast that mm -hmm. is now generating a lot of digital sales to individuals, not only, not only sponsors, but now individuals on a membership basis. But that was our whole objective was like, let's dive deep and create content that people are actually looking for. 
and let's do the Correct. research up front. Let's do all the hard work up front. That way we don't have to do the hard work on the back side of it. So so tell like is this like some kind of a top line like funnel or where well, tell me what your digital sales strategy like are you just going to where to find what to sell what so actually it's not about selling it's about what we're doing right here which is content creation okay mm. digital sales is not about selling and this is where people go so wrong with it and billy i'm sure that you've gone on to a platform and you see some of your friends or maybe some of your acquaintances and all they're doing is talking about their product Right, they're talking I think about. I their may have been that guy. I mean, I don't know, but maybe, <laughs> probably, you know. because that's what we think. We think, hey, let's talk sure. about our product, but actually, you should talk just the opposite. You don't talk about your product. You create content. Content is at the core of a digital sales strategy. Mm -hmm. So, and it starts to me, Billy. There's four aspects of a digital sales strategy. The first aspect is you have to know who your customer is and who you're targeting. Because if you try to target everyone, you target no one. So you got to know, okay. you got to zone in on that ideal customer persona, the avatar, whatever you want to call it. You got to zone in and you got to know who that person or persons are so that you can effectively communicate with them. And when I say know them, Billy, that leads me to the next step. Go ahead. You got a question. So, I see it coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So first of all, how, and maybe you'll answer this in the next step, but it's like, how do I... If I just started a business, and maybe I'm pretty new to business, maybe I've not been an entrepreneur, maybe this is my first business ever, and I go, man, I get this, this sticker printing company, and I am super jazzed on getting people to buy stickers online from me, and I'll fulfill the order, blah, blah, blah. How do I even know who that person is without just trying to sell? And how do I That's do a great question. How do I do that? Um, it's called research. You got to research. So, so you do I just decide like, hey, I'm a sticker guy who caters to this industry and this industry only? Or what is it's that? It's a really great like? question. And I think, Billy, it actually starts with what's your business strategy? When you started a sticker company, what is your business strategy with stickers? Was your strategy to sell stickers to every Apple laptop holder in the world so that they can put stickers on their laptop? Okay. Or is your is your strategy to sell stickers to teachers that they can use in their classroom as a reward? You don't just start a sticker company to say, hey, I'm going to start a sticker company. I'm going to sell to everybody in the world. That's not how why you would start a sticker company. Maybe Billy would start sure. a sticker company that way. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Okay, cool. All right. Next, now, we can get, now we can move on. I was just... I was just curious for the person who's like, man, I don't really know. I know how to do something or I know how to source something, but I don't know who yep. would be the target audience for that. So it's really just jump in there, get your mm -hmm. research down, like really nail it out and probably even make a decision of who do I want to try to target first. Yes, absolutely. Because when you start a business, you have an idea of an industry or a person or people that you want to sell your products to. You know, you, you have a, you started your business with a plan and a reason so let's take that plan and that reason and let's really get focused in on who your customer is and you want to know everything about them, right? You want to understand all the details about them because the more you know about them, the better position you are to go to the next question. And the right. next question is, or the next point is um, engagement with them by understanding the problems that they have in their business and how your product or service solves a business problem for them, okay? All right. So what you want to do is talk about those problems and talk about those pain points. Some people might refer to them that way. Talk about those pain points. So let's use the sticker company as an example. So the sticker company, let's say you started it for teachers. So the teacher, her pain point is a low-cost way to reward students with an exciting, I'm making this up obviously, right? But with an exciting good. product that motivates them to continue to move forward and really inspires them to want that sticker of the day, right? All right. So that's her pain point. So you've got to address how your stickers can be, um, how your stickers solve that problem, how they can be customized, how they can be colorful, how they can inspire. You have to talk about that rather than saying, and this is the mistake so many people make, is I've got a sticker pack of 500 stickers for $25. Get them today and be sure you enter the, the, the checkout. You enter the coupon code yeah. creating daily for 25% off. 
That's what people do, and that oh, is absolutely on, the Sid, wrong I gotta approach. De- I'm going to delete my commercial spot. <laughs> Dang on it. <laughs> Hit well, those stickers. No, and I understand what you're saying because I think what, you know, and it was similar to when I sold, and, I, you know, T-shirts are just part of my promotional yep. background, but um, when I sold T-shirts really to nonprofits, it wasn't really about, hey, put your logo on a T-shirt. It was really about let's generate a source of revenue for your nonprofit to enable you to continue to do what you're trying to do with your organization. And it was an add on of revenue, you know, besides going out and selling donuts on the side of the road or whatever it was for a fundraiser, it was like sell your own brand, brand your stuff, brand your product and get it out there. And so I think that's pretty smart to, you know, one dive into it, figure out who it is. And, and, and I would even say like throw some mud against the wall. Cause not every time I've started a business, I've not like had it perfectly dialed in. But I'll figure out pretty quickly who my audience is because they're the ones who resonate with me the most and they're the ones who refer my business out the most. And so that's how I got into this nonprofit world was because I helped one or two nonprofits and it was referral, 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 referral. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, this is a real need that I'm saw. So I kind of did it the backwards way of like I didn't know the problem and then I kind of built the system and figured out the problem. I disagree. You knew the problem. You just said the problem. Right, so you defined your but, ideal customer but not when as a I, nonprofit, but not when I started. Okay, what I was trying to do was sell T-shirts to anybody who would buy, ah, them. and then it just sure. happened that this one nonprofit kind of popped off, and then they had a network of other nonprofits. But sure. anyway, I mean, I'm not saying that's the right way to do it, like because I didn't do any research. I could have decided on a niche and said, "Hey, I'm going after this niche," which is what I did. Sure. What I did in podcast world, and it's paid off tremendously. So. Anyway, that's another example. That's absolutely another example. So in the t-shirt example, the niche is nonprofit. The problem is money. The problem is fundraising. They need money in order to fuel or to fuel their mission and to fuel their growth. Right. Yeah. And you provided a solution, which is a t-shirt that they could sell with their brand on it that created a much needed revenue into their business. So knowing the problems, and I'm going to tell you again, this goes down, you got to do the research, Right. You have to do the research in order to understand the customer problems. And if you're a new business, Google is your best friend to find information about your particular client. If you're an existing business or maybe you've worked for a similar business and you're starting your business, but you have experience in that industry, look at your customers. Look at what your customers are buying from us or from you. Look at what it is they're hiring you to do, and that's going to give you a lot of clues. And another way to do this is to actually interview them. Either interview them or survey them. And Billy, a podcast podcast is an amazing way to interview your ideal customer to understand their pain points. Boy, that sure sounds good. I had that one. I had that one lined up, man. I'm glad somebody finally said something worthy to get it. But, Did you expect anything less? Oh, uh, you know what, Sid? No, I didn't actually. I didn't. <laughs> I knew this was going to be a fired up podcast because we're talking about your favorite thing. And so, yep. so man, I do want to just like pause right there for a moment. And you know, we're kind of talking about t-shirt business. We're talking about content creation. And what I've noticed in owning a couple different businesses, and then also being a content creator. Is all this stuff is the same thing. We're trying to get the attention of the people that we want to do X. And so it all kind of goes, you know, hand in hand and together. And what you're saying right now about bringing people onto your podcast that you want to do business with, or you want to build that relationship, or you want to open that door. Um, I've also done that with a t-shirt printing business where I had an entrepreneur podcast where I would bring on entrepreneurs that I couldn't get on the phone to pitch them like, Hey, let's buy some shirts or whatever. Um, but I could get them, you know, pre-call podcast, post-call. And then I quickly learned on both sides. So we both learned about each other. And then I was actually able to qualify them better rather than them, you know, cold calling them. And they say, yeah, 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 let's do t-shirts. And then they were awful to deal with. Like the podcast was like nice buffer to figure out, are they going to show up on time? Are they going to do what they say they're going to do? Are they, you know, it's like, there's a lot of stuff packed in this one thing of an interview on a podcast. So I just wanted to share that. I want to go back to something that you just said a second ago. And I said this in the beginning of our show, Billy, which is a digital sales strategy and content creation is about being found by your ideal customer. Your customer is searching for things. 
and they're searching whatever it is you sell, your customer is searching for you or your products or your services. It's your job as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as a sales leader, as a marketing leader for that matter, to be certain that they find you when they're out there in the world of Google and typing in the keywords. It's your job to be sure that they find you. That's what this is about. This is about you shifting your mindset to always trying to find new business and find new customers and shifting it to so that you can be found by your customers. And it all starts with content creation. Oh, yeah, that's so good. It's Larry oh, the Lizard. Larry. Yo, what's up, man? I told that guy, get out of here. Let me talk to my guy, Sid. You know, uh, Thank goodness, dude. I'm so sick of Billy. It's not even funny. Uh, oh, yeah. Me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too, man. You know, he puts me in the cupboard right there behind the sugar, but she doesn't look bad. You know what I mean? Huh? You know what hey, I mean? Hey, Larry. Hey, Larry. Yeah. Billy sent me a message earlier um, saying that he was actually going to possibly make you hey. lemonade before the day was over so dude you better make sure you get in that cupboard high yeah he tried to grab me early and give me a squeeze and i just beep, peed right in his face lemon juice you know what i mean anyway look if you guys need a sales guy call larry the lemon larry the lemon dot com anyway sid i saw you over here i just wanted to, oh i frozen i frozen anyway that guy's an <laughs> idiot that larry the lemon guy Wow. I was love wow. I love it. That was awesome. Wow. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> I can't believe he interrupted the show like that. That was so crazy. Anyway. I was waiting on him, dude. I was really waiting on because I love me some Larry the Lemon. I'm like anyway. this big. He, he needs his own Instagram channel, Bill. <laughs> That's so dumb. We had so many people <laughs> stop watching because of that. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry to, sorry to oh, interrupt you with Larry the Lemon. I just no, wanted, <laughs> I wanted to surprise. I didn't want you to know anything about it. So there That's we go. great. Hey, did you see Nee's comment on, on YouTube? He goes, really, Billy? Yeah, Nee, nee is the, um, I said this in a clubhouse room earlier, Nee is the biggest fan and the biggest hater of this show all at one time. <laughs> I, he must be like emotionally distraught or something, like bipolar, <laughs> according you know, to, the, to the show. Awesome. So anyway. That's, all, that's awesome. So now that you totally sidetracked us I sidetracked with you. Larry I, the I, I didn't do anything. Larry came in here and bumped me in the head. Put me in the floor. Oh, uh, it's great. No, he, he peed in you. What do you say? He peed in you? Peed <laughs> he, peed, on you? he peed on me with his lemon juice. What a weirdo. <laughs> so, so, so we're trying to, Oh, my God. <laughs> so we're building content to find our audience. That's where we were. I knew that was going to happen. I was like, that's bad. That's really bad timing. <laughs> <laughs> oh god if Sid has a heart attack right now I would feel horrible <laughs> oh man okay Billy we gotta get back on track oh my gosh all right take me to that point. was funny take, oh my gosh you can't do that again take me, I won't do it anymore <laughs> this show <laughs> hey I'm with you really Billy come on dude you totally derailed this is supposed to be Fridays are supposed to be business oh, yeah. I should have known with the backward baseball cap that you were going to pull some shenanigans Anyway, speaking of digital sales, if you guys want to wear the lemon <laughs> mug, hit me up. Oh my goodness, that's too much fun. So where were we? Let's keep. Let's All right, keep so going. I think we I think we complete step number two. Now let's jump to step, step number, number two, three. Okay, so step number three. This is about really accelerate accelerating your growth by determining the right platforms. Where do you want to be, and that is based on your research of where your customers are. Mm -hmm. So here's a perfect example. If your customer is a 45 to 65 year old senior executive in a healthcare system, they're not on Instagram. You need to know that they're not on TikTok, which means your content should not be on those platforms. Maybe you have a profile there, maybe you're visible there, but you shouldn't be focused there. Your focus should be LinkedIn in this particular case, and maybe even YouTube, mm -hmm. because that generation will search YouTube for inf information. They will go to YouTube University to learn things. Okay, this is right. This, this is good because you know I think it's so easy nowadays, for especially with different software, to be everywhere all the time, and you know even in the live streaming space. Like, it's really easy. I have a software right now where I can be in multiple places. I can be in seven or eight places if I want to. But what I've been learning, even over the last couple of months, a month and a half or whatever I've been doing this show, is you really want to drive people to where you are and where you want to be. So if you're trying to grow your audience, it's like, don't show up everywhere all the time with the same message, but really focus, like you're saying, on the platform you want to be on. So, um, But I do like the research part of, like, figure out, 
figure out that demographic even down to age because because with that sometimes has some behaviors. Not always. It's not like every forty five year old acts the same and uses the same platforms. Correct. But I do think that is um, really. I haven't done that, so maybe I should back yeah. up and go. Who do I want to listen to this show? Well, the more that you know, the better it is that you can serve them, that you can create content that supports them, that actually solves their problem. Sid <laughs> laughing so hard. <laughs> okay, knee. Nee. Billy's been on me since six o'clock this morning about my age, and that 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 not funny anymore. I don't need you piling in on it. <laughs> he, said, he said, "Sid laughing so hard. Hopefully, Medicare's got you." That's so funny. Yeah. I'm not on Medicare yet. Thank you, dude. I might have some gray hairs. They're gonna start spelling out. Dude. Billy is a. <laughs> yeah, I got them too, man. So. I was laughing hard. I haven't laughed that hard in a long time, but you know, you got to have, we talked about this this morning. This is about chemistry. You got to have fun. Yeah. You got to enjoy it. And you and I have a lot of chemistry as it relates to doing a live stream and having a conversation about whatever we're having a conversation about. Man. I, you know, I, I like that because oftentimes people go, Billy, where should I go? Where should I create my content? Where, you know, what platform is going to be the best? And, and I'm often like, you got to do what you enjoy doing. Like, People will argue with me, hey, you should be doing live audio, not live video, because you have a bigger audience over on Clubhouse. You have bigger opportunities to talk to more people more often. But I just don't enjoy live audio as much as I do live video. And it's fine because whatever you focus on will grow, I believe, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to focus because I really I have a better chemistry with live video than I do with live audio. Like I'm just not nearly as engaged in my ADHD brains over here. Like, Oh, I got to, you know, wash the dishes or whatever. Yep. As to where here, I know like I have to be engaged. I got to be, you know, dialed in. Mm -hmm. And I think that will resonate with our audiences and will resonate with potential business owners and, and customers who want to do business with us because of that, you know, that quality of content that we're delivering on a platform we're the most comfortable with. So, okay. I'm a, I love that, Billy, but I'm going to add to it. You're doing something that you love to do on YouTube and on Bullhorn, okay? But your customer is content creators, right? Yeah. That's your customer. Yeah. And where do content creators hang out? Where YouTube. The, where there's content. <laughs> yes. And right. YouTube is, a, they, they're producing content, they're consuming content. So YouTube is a great place for you to be um, as it relates to attracting and, and being found by content creators who are looking for the type of content that you're creating. 100%. I knew you were going to try to coach me on this call, Sid. I knew it. Shocker. You guys got to watch out for Sid. He'll try to coach you. I like it. All right. <laughs> yeah, All right, great. man. So take, now you said you got four points. Is that right? Yeah. So the third right. point was finding the right platform, right? And the fourth point is actually where we get to content creations. This mm -hmm. is about dominating your market with content creation. This is where you come up with your thought leadership, where you really out there, you're leading the conversation and you're um, really, because here's the thing, if you don't lead the conversation, your competition will, right? If you don't control your brand message, your competition will. So this is about you standing up and producing the content that your customers are looking for. You're putting it out there. So you've selected it. You see the process here, Billy, who's your customer, yeah. you know who they are. Then you got to what their pain points and how your product solves their problem, what your solution is. Then you identified the platforms that you want to be on and it's digital. So it doesn't have to be just social media. It could be Twitter spaces. It could be LinkedIn audio. It could be a podcast. It could be a YouTube strategy, right? And then now you're producing the content that your customers are going to find that's going to bring them into your ecosystem that's going to get them because here's the thing this is it creates brand awareness and as you get the brand awareness the client visits your website as they visit the website they're engaging in conversation with you they're reaching out to you and then they're coming back again or they're giving you referrals right so mm. this is a little bit think of it as a circle if you will yeah but the important thing is is that when they find you you got to have a conversation with them Finding it could be right here. There could be somebody right here, Billy, that could be potentially your ideal customer. There could be somebody in Clubhouse. And when they come to your website, make sure you want to be sure that they're finding the information in an easy way. So that's where this content creation leads them to your website, which leads them to engaging. Because when they find you, they're looking for something, right? And they yeah. need a place to go, which would be your website. 
Man, and sometimes, I mean, I'm going to push back on that a little bit because I think we've focused so much on websites, and I've done a lot of business just from being on one of these social audio platforms, having a podcast, being that voice that shows up every week or now every every day, and people go, hey, man, I love what you're doing. Let's jump on a call. So it really does shorten the, the lifespan of the sales yep. process. Uh, as well, of, as far as creating content that your your ideal customer wants. But the one thing you said there, uh, I just want to make sure people catch this: is if you don't have the con- or if you don't lead the conversation, your competition will. I think that is hugely important to keep in the back of your mm-hmm. mind when you're when you're when you're sitting at your Rodecaster Pro or you're sitting in front of your camera or you're getting ready to hit the start a room button on Clubhouse and you just get paralyzed and don't do it. I think this is a huge motivator to say, "Hey, man, if I'm not showing up, somebody else will." And whoever, sh- or, you know, the early bird gets the worm, or whatever that old saying is. So that's a that's powerful, man. I wrote that down for sure because I'm so, like, I well, want to remember that. So that's quotable. Just be sure you give me credit for it when you post it on Instagram. Okay. Um, Wait, what book did you read that out of? No, <laughs> so I, I'm just I, didn't I'm just mess. I do read a lot of books though, but <laughs> I'm, I'm going to actually challenge you on the website thing for a minute. Okay, so yes. Having someone um, hear you talk in a clubhouse room that sends you a direct message that says, hey, man, let's get on a Zoom and let's chat. You have no way to confirm or not confirm that they haven't been to your website and checked you out and saw what you are producing. You have no way to confirm that they did not type Billy Billy Thorpe podcaster in Google and get the information out there about you. I'll give you that one. Okay. Just saying. Just I'll give saying. you that one. It's, unless they filled out my Google survey that no one does that said I found so, your website. <laughs> so can we hit the like the bell ring like one point for Sid? Like ding 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 ding. I don't know about that, but I can do this. That's a point for you. That's a point for me. So anyway, whatever. I need to get better. We should keep effects. a tally. We should keep a tally on the screen, Billy. Like who gets the most points today? I barely got Larry the Lemon on the screen today, so I don't know about the time. You would have won with Larry the Lemon. Let us just be clear. You would have won with Larry. <laughs> uh-huh. And we were keeping score. And we're not talking about this anymore because I'm not going to laugh anymore. All right. No more. Knee's going knee, to make another old man joke. No more laughing, Sid. No more laughing. <laughs> right. So, so, so those are the four Those are the four points. I call it lead. Okay. So L-E-A-D. Re- so recap real quick those four things. Just okay, super quick. So make sure you know who your ideal customer is. Make sure you understand what their problems are and how your product or service solves their problem. Make sure you identify the platforms that are appropriate at where your customer's hanging out because you don't want to go to TikTok and produce content on TikTok and your customer's not there. And then the fourth is then determine the right type of content that is going to allow you to be found by your customer. You got to know what they're searching for. You got to know what they're looking for and you got to produce that that type of content so that when they Google it, that you start to come up. Yeah, man. I, I love this conversation. And I, and I want to remind people too, if you're watching, if you have any questions for Sid, um, then make sure you leave those. If you're on Bullhorn in the question section, um, if you're on, on uh, YouTube right there in the, in the chat and we can bring it on the screen and we can read it or I can read it to Sid. He probably can't see it, but I can read it to him. Um, or if you're on Bullhorn and you want to call into the show, you can do that as well. So feel free to do that and ask some questions. Uh, so Sid, real quick, how do people, are you, you, I don't know if you officially have launched any kind of mentoring or coaching thing or anything like that, but how can people get, I know you have a discord, so tell me some way they can get connected and, and stay on your <clears throat> radar and you stay on theirs. Well, I'm happy to do that, but I'm not going to let that dig go by without acknowledging <laughs> that, that dig. That you just, I heard it, man. You almost started laughing, too, right oh, in the middle yeah. of it. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, just wait till next All Friday, right. man. I'm going to be I'm gonna be armed and ready next Friday, so I let's mean, be clear. You just let me beat you up all the time, so I just keep doing it. <laughs> yes, stupid is, stupid does, is what they say, right? So, you know... Um, I am working on a course, Billy, um, uh, for digital sales strategies. I do have a Discord server. If you are an entrepreneur or a small business and you're familiar with Discord, come and join us over there or just shoot me a message and I'll send you the link to invite you to join our Discord server. It's called the Amazing Entrepreneurs Club. So that's a great place. 
But my favorite place, my favorite platform to connect with people on is LinkedIn. So if you're there, if you're on LinkedIn, send me a connection request. Make sure you hit that add note button and let me know that you saw us on the, saw me on the live stream today. And you want to talk more about digital sales strategies. I'm happy to help you and happy to support you. Awesome, man. And just make sure you said Billy sent you that way. I, I can... <clears throat> I can just force him to pay me some type of affiliate commission if yeah, you guys yeah. do a big deal. All right, Sid. So now what I want to do, since we have a little bit of time left, I mean, one, that was awesome. Thanks for sharing those four steps of digital sales. And just a reminder for people listening, Sid is going to be my co-host on Fridays or most Fridays as he can. And we're really going to talk about more business-related stuff. However, content creators, you know, this is a business. It is a business for people creating and um, you know, my friend Jenny Rogers was on earlier this week, and we were kind of laughing about that, how people say, like, oh, don't be a content creator, don't be a creator, like, they don't make any money, all that kind of stuff. Um, so there is. So I want to have a little fun, but I did forget a segment earlier that I do want to share, which is my my takeaway segment. I only do it once a week, but I do get a little takeaway segment, and that would be back because I got three random questions I'm going to ask Sid. another opportunity for people that say oh i don't qualify well if you really love the brand hey brand i'm i'm great online here's some of the the work i've done in the past i would love to go live on your amazon page and talk about your products There's like number one you just think too much <laughs> you really right. do like most people don't realize that your mind if if you don't have an outlet you're gonna be stuck <laughs> and i remember writing tom a song called you are the king of my castle and the hero of my time. I went, you are the king of my castle and the hero of my time. And I swear, that guy looked at me and he went, what have I done? The DMs, the sliding your DMs, you just don't have to do it when, you know, you're trying to holler. You can do it when you're trying to get a guest too because you can connect that general connection with a photo. All right, there we go. There's a little recap from this week. So it's yeah, good stuff, man. It's a lot of fun, you know, and there probably could have been some better takeaways, but I just went through and picked out what I thought was the funnest. Cause I like that week. segment, Billy. I like that segment a lot. Yeah, man, it's good. So if, if people are, you know, listening or watching, you haven't checked it out. Like I'm going live every day at two o'clock, 2 PM Eastern time. So join us live. But if you can't go to our YouTube channel and uh, check us out, we got a podcast. We upload everything as a podcast on Apple, Spotify, all those places as well. Um, so Sid, we'll end this with a little random question segment that you didn't even know was going to happen. See, I didn't, uh, I didn't sign up for this part. Well, you can dip out anytime you got to leave okay. me. See, man, but... it's been great. Like... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what is the, these weird... better not be old joke related by the way. No, they're not. I, I, okay, I, good. These are randomly generated. Okay. So have you ever had a weird Uber experience? Have I asked this question before? No, All I'm right. not. Not ask me this question. I've ever had a weird Uber experience. Not that I remember, actually. They've all been pretty good. You know, I guess I could say it wasn't really weird. It was annoying. Can we? Can it be? Yeah, annoying? we can talk. Yeah, that, that's that's a, that's fine. So when I land in an airport and I get in, that's most of the time when I use an Uber is when I'm in an airport, right? And I've been on an airplane for two hours or so traveling, and I get there and I get in an Uber. The last thing I want to do, Billy, is talk to people. <laughs> and I want to look at my phone. I need to check my email. I need to listen to voicemail. Don't talk to me. And I remember this one drive in Chicago after a really long day. I'm driving into the city to my hotel, and he talked nonstop. It was awful. <laughs> it was awful. So, you know, it's just like it's more of an irritating than a weird experience. But, yeah, don't talk to me. Dude, I, all those Uber drivers out there who picks it up, if you see this face again, don't talk. Just don't That's talk. probably why my Uber rating is not a five. It's like a four point something because I don't <laughs> like to talk to people. This guy said hello to me. <laughs> Maybe you need a bodyguard. Maybe <laughs> Did just... you know that you have an Uber rating that they rate you? Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, they rate you and other drivers can see your rating. So they can be like, yeah. no, that guy's a... Yeah, he only tipped me ten percent, not fifteen percent. Boom, two stars. Wow, that's so. So funny, yeah, man. they rate you just like you rate them. So, dang, yeah. dude, that's crazy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, man. So I've had a one weird, one really weird Uber experience. I I was going downtown with a friend of mine, and so I was like, you know what? I'll just we might have a couple of drinks, so I'll just take an Uber. 
And so I get in this Uber and we're driving. It's not that far downtown from my house in Wilmington. And, and so we're driving and all of a sudden this guy like reaches up and like turns his phone off and it, and it has all the like directions and all this yeah. kind of stuff. And so I'm like, ah, okay, maybe he's just resetting his phone. I was like, Oh, is everything okay, man? Like, you know, whatever. I was like, I know where we're going. So I can just tell you what turns to make. And he's like, Oh no, no, no. I just got to reset it. It, it. it wasn't working right. And I'm like, I could see it. It was on his dash. I'm like, yeah, dude, it's working fine. Like, what are we doing right now? And so anyway, so he's like fiddling with his phone. And then he like passes the street that I'm going to get dropped off on. And then he like passes the next block. And I'm like, hey, man, you can just stop right here. I'm just going to I'm just going to get out. He's like, oh, no, no, no. I'm going to do it. I'm going to find it for you. Like, it's going to be fine. I just got to turn my phone back on. I'm like, nope, you can stop. I'm going to get out right here. Did he, st- did he stop? Yeah, dude, he did stop. But he wasn't stopping. I mean, I'm not saying this guy was going to go chop me up and put me in a freezer somewhere. But it was like weirding me out because I'm like, why did you just turn Would your phone weird me off? out too. Yeah. So, so do you know, anyway. um, Billy, anytime I get into an Uber or a cab, I always put the address in my phone and follow along. Oh, that's a good, that's a good I tip. put the address in yeah. my map and I put it on quiet and I follow along to make sure they're going the right place. I do do that. <laughs> You're holding your phone in the back like, don't talk to me because I'm listening Mike, to this girl. Tell me what you way you turned should turn. 500 feet ago. <laughs> you should have like turned five. Yes. So I do do that. That's a pretty good idea. That's a pretty yep. good idea. I want to know, man. All right, what's the most ridiculous fact that you know? Oh, my goodness. The most ridiculous fact that I know. That's a hard one. Because I'm sure I know some very ridiculous facts. This is a tough, like, what's the silly well, fact dude, that I know? I'll, sh- I'll share one with you while you're thinking. Yeah, please do. So I went to school. Where I went to school, there was like an elevator, and this guy was like, I think he was fixing the elevator. He was repairing it, or no, no, no. I can't remember who. I can't remember what he's doing. He's like inspecting it or something. I can't remember. Um, and I was like, hey, I was like, man, is this like a big business? Like a lot of people work in this business, and whatever he did, which I think it was like. He was only like this, like one of seventeen people in the whole country that whatever he was doing to an elevator did to elevators, and and then I was curious. I was like, well, man, I'm curious since you deal with elevators, and it was like some kind of making sure he he was like making sure a table wasn't too close to the elevator door, like a table external. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm like, why are you doing that? And he's like, well, the number one way people die on an elevator is women get their high heels caught in the little crack, trip and break their neck on the furniture that's closest to the thing. And I was like, wow, that is super creepy, dude. Like it is super wow. creepy. <laughs> so, but now you know that I don't fact. even, I've never even worn high heels before cause they don't fit, but I, <laughs> yeah, I definitely, when I, I, I step over have. the crack, man, I step over the crack. So, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy went to. I love me. Billy went to a private school. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Knee, knee's a troll. He's a troll. <laughs> anyway, uh, Billy, I can't think of a ridiculous fact. This is really challenging. That I here's can't a think ridiculous of a, fact. Sid doesn't have a ridiculous fact. This is true. That's ridiculous. I should have been prepared for this. I could have come up with a ridiculous fact. Every uh, now and then, I'll say something, and I'm like, "What? How do I even know this?" Like, how do I know this? So that's a good podcast. Sorry, Ridiculous facts. That's it's kind of like that one I told you about good. this morning. <laughs> Dude, oh, you got to check out Ridiculous. I did. Yeah, I did. yeah, yeah. That one. That one's pretty good. Or we should actually let people in on that inside joke, Billy. Sorry, uh, we're talking about something and didn't explain it. You want to be on the inside? You got to pay my membership fee. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> talking about oh, digital sales <laughs> well man i'm, I'm excited for next week when we we get back into it so that'll be a lot of fun i don't know the topic we'll talk about but as always we'll announce it later on next week wait a minute wait a minute you said you had three questions that was only two. Oh, oh what's the third one well i don't know let me let me just find a random one here we go all right here we go you had three if you could sing a duet with anyone who would it be oh man or woman Anyone. We don't discriminate around here. Hmm. So this is a really interesting question because I have a lot of favorite uh, musicians. So I'll tell you, if it was a woman, I would pick Carrie Underwood just because she's hot. (laughs) 
Like she is. I've met her in the airport. I think I've I have asked a picture. You, I think I've asked you this question before. You have asked heard, me something before. Or like I've heard that, you yeah. say something about Carrie Underwood being attractive. Yeah, she's hot. Yeah. <laughs> she's hot. If it were a guy, um, it would be Matt Kearney, who's a kind of a pop musician. I really like his music. He's kind okay. of a soft pop musician. I really like his music, but I'd pick Carrie Underwood first because she's hot. Did you hear me say I met her? Yeah, you met her in an airport. I did met her in an airport. Yep. So stalking does pay off then. She was in the Nashville airport at five thirty in the morning with her uh, posse getting ready to take a commercial. This was before this was before she was as popular as she is oh. now. She had just gotten engaged to uh, the hockey player, and uh, one. And I'm looking at her going, "Who who is this? Why do I know who this person?" I'm looking at my buddy that was traveling with me. I'm like, "I'm like who is this?" And then I heard the. I heard the uh, security guard say, good morning, Miss Underwood. And I went, oh, my gosh, that's it. And I, like, told my buddy that that's Carrie Underwood. He's like, no, it's not. No, it's not. I'm like, yes, it is Carrie Underwood. <laughs> and so he does – he breaks the cardinal rule. He walks up to her and says good morning to her and starts talking to her and asks for a picture at 530 in the morning. Oh, my goodness. And I'm like – I looked at her and I went, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what I, all I said was I'm sorry. <laughs> so, but it comes. It was like nine years ago or so. It yeah. comes up on my Facebook feed every year. You're like that, I, that I, picture. I'm sorry, my friend just disturbed you. But while we're here, can I get a picture too? <laughs> I actually, I did not. I did not. It was only of him. Oh, really? I only took it. Of, I only took it of him. <laughs> yep. You should turn. When you see them in the airport like that, they don't want to be disrupted. Like Nobody they don't want to be. Yeah. yeah. You don't so. even like people talking to you in an Uber. <laughs> I know. So imagine but, people trying to talk to you where. I know that most of the people, like somebody, uh, Nee said he would sing with, who's the, I don't know who that Soldier is. Soldier Boy? So, is that how you say it? Soldier Boy? I guess. I don't know Soldier who that Boy. Is. Soldier Boy. I don't know who that is. He's a rapper. But Billy, if I saw you in an airport, absolutely, I would come up and I would fanboy over you. I'd want your autograph. I mean, you know, I, I'd, I'd want to get all of everybody around you because you're Billy Thorpe. I mean, like you are creating daily. You are famous. I mean, almost bald headed, but famous. Almost bald. That's right. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Sid. You'll not get the invite link next week. You oh, started it at just, six o'clock I'm this morning. Like, Let's I'm be like, clear. Oh, Sid. Yeah, he was supposed to be on the show. I don't know why he's not here. He must have ghosted me. That's just how he does. That's his person. We can accommodate that. I can ghost you. We can accommodate <laughs> that. <laughs> oh, man. Sid. Are we out of time? Well, dude, Are we out of time? This is, yeah, we, we're getting oh, right there. Goodness. It's. <laughs> Oh yeah, is this almost finished? I gotta go, <laughs> honey. I'm almost done. I'm talking to my the, friends on the internet. That's right, Billy. Like, listen, look at look at Nate. the Billy Thorpe. That's what he I'm is talking the about. Billy Nate. Thorpe. Yeah. Nee is like, once again. He's gonna get troll of the show award this year. Just troll. So, so Billy, so when are you gonna have Nee on? I invited him. When are you on. gonna have Nee on the show? I invited him on. He gave me a reason why. He said he said I wouldn't want him on. And then I was like, okay, I guess that's a, I guess that's a hard no. So I didn't say anything else about it. And now he like kind of somewhat talks trash about me on clubhouse rooms and mentions being on the show often. So he is, he probably gets more action on this show than most people do because he's in the comments the whole time trolling. So, so I have a great idea. I have a great idea that in the month of May, while you're moving, maybe me and Sid could take over creating daily. You think I would do that? I would rather just like, no way. I mean, you know, there's there's accidental train wrecks and there's self sabotage, and that sabotage would just be unbelievable. However, we have a I, I we, would be we could consider something like that. Me would have to run the live stream, but whoa, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm 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 exiting this platform now because now you're making more fun oh, of me about boy. my inability or my lack of understanding of all technology. Uh, nee. I haven't focused on it, but go ahead. Oh no, I was gonna say Nee said that he would take leave just to just to uh, he's in the military, so he would take some time <laughs> off just to do that show. <laughs> just to do that show. So let's be clear. Around November, October, November. Um, I'm like searching for live stream options. What am I going to do? Billy's hitting me up about Ecamm and how great Ecamm is. And it's awesome. Around Christmas time, he sends me an affiliate link. Ecamm's got a great deal. You need to use this affiliate link and make money off of my purchase is what he did. So I purchased Ecamm. 
with the commitment from Billy that he would teach me how to use Ecamm, all the scenes yeah. and everything. And I'm still waiting. I've asked multiple times me for Billy to teach me how to, <laughs> to use an e e e e We've talked about so. it in clubhouse rooms and he never <laughs> once says, Sid, let's get on a call and I'll teach you how to use Ecamm. Oh, he just I, got my money. Hey, I, 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 no, you I got have, my money. I have Ecamm's money. Ecamm wrote me the check. <laughs> you, got, not Sid. you got 10% or 20% <laughs> of what I paid to Ecamm. So I think you need to send Wait. me that back in a, in a Starbucks gift card because you stole from me. Well, you lied. when you actually reach out like a professional and put a date on the calendar, I'll show up and show you how Ecamm works. I've been very generous with <laughs> like my offering. Like a professional. Every time, <laughs> every time I talk to Sid, Sid, what's up, man? You want to learn Ecamm? Oh, dude, I'm so swamped this week. I got 18 million projects, maybe next week. So Whatever. You have a, only once called me and said, you want to set up Ecamm? Okay, and I was hold like going on, on vacation. Hold on, hold on. I was hold like going on. on vacation, and I couldn't do it. I was on vacation. Let's put this into perspective. If I said, which I am not saying this, on this live stream, I am going to give away a Tesla to the first person who sends me an email, people are going to send me an email. If I'm going to give something away, like time, energy, resources, the <clears> person <throat> I'm giving it to is now responsible for setting it up, not the person giving it away. <laughs> oh, you're hey, such a you, jerk. You, you know what, Elon oh, Musk? Please. You know what, Elon Musk? I know you want to gift me that, but today's not very good. Maybe I... next Thursday. <laughs> Maybe next Thursday you can come oh, to my house geez. and give it to me. I'll fly to California and pick up a Tesla. No way. I can't oh, do that. Knee. Thank you. Knee <laughs> nailed it in the comments. Knee nailed it in the comments. Snake oil salesman for Ecamm Live. That is so funny. <laughs> And okay, I'm actually sending uh, an email right now to Billy dude, for it. request for eCam training. I'm doing it right now. That's perfect. Uh, I hope it doesn't go in the spam folder. That would be really unfortunate. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Is this show over yet? No, it's not. It's gonna. It's going forever. I, this was a two-hour special. I forgot to tell you. Oh so my anyway. gosh. Well, Sid, I'm sorry for all you people having to listen to have to put up with Billy's shenanigans <laughs> like this for today. <laughs> uh, knee, knee said, add uh, me to that training. Knee, no way. That training for you is 500 bucks after the way you talked to me in the chat. Are you kidding me? Oh, knee, man. Knee, here's what's going to happen, Knee. I'll send you an invite to join me on the Zoom, okay? <laughs> and then we'll pop into Billy's Zoom, and he, you'll be there, and he can't do anything to kick you out. So we'll get that training, Nate. Don't you worry. That'll be perfect. Yeah, anybody can come to that uh, and after you buy Ecamm Live. If you don't own it through my affiliate link, I can't help you. <laughs> you don't help anyways. <laughs> I just wonder how many suckers out there have bought Ecamm through Billy's affiliate link and have not oh. gotten any training. That's I mean it's not like it's not like hey I'm an affiliate for Ecamm you buy it and I train you like that's not even a thing like I just that's offered what you said. I just offered that's my help said. to you Sid not to anyone who uses my link they have a they have a plenty of hey let's put it out there out let's there. put it out there everybody no, right now no, put it, go out to your no, socials no. and say Billy Thorpe is offering free <laughs> training <laughs> no oh my god. By the way, yeah, it's good Friday. It's good, man. It's been fun. It's it's, it has been fun today. Sorry, guys, for all the laughter and bad jokes. Hey, don't apologize. This is the number one rated show I've had all week. Just sit there and keep telling <laughs> jokes. Hey, by the way, Billy, because I like to coach people and I like to help people, would you like to take, we've got like six minutes left in the show today. Would you like to take the next few minutes and practice your intro? And maybe I'll give you a little bit of critique to help no. you like nail that intro. No, that is part of the beauty is I don't care. That's the beauty of it. No, when the intro, you said one day I'm going to learn to do this intro. I say it all the time. I say it every day. That is the <laughs> well, then, intro. Here, I'm here to help, man. I'm here That's to help. the intro. <laughs> that is the intro. Hey, it's your host. My name's Billy, and I, I like to cook bacon with my shirt off. That's what I always say. And then I didn't say oh, it today, and I didn't know what else to say. So anyway, <laughs> I do cook bacon with my shirt off because I'm a badass. I don't care. <laughs> Pop the grease on me. Let's go. 
so much fun. Oh, this conversation is going downhill quick. It is. We better get out of here. Well, Sid. It's a visual I didn't need. <laughs> man, thank you so much, Sid, for being on. I'm going to close thank this you, show buddy. out, man. Appreciate you. See you All next right. Friday. Yep, see you next Friday. All right, guys, that is it for today here on Creating Daily. Super amounts of fun with Sid. Uh, as always, he's going to join me most Fridays when he can. But next Monday, we got Money Monday coming right up uh, after the Easter weekend here. So have a good Easter weekend. I'll see you at 2 p.m. On Monday, we're going to be talking about memberships for your podcast or, or, or your live stream, but creating a membership group. I recently have done this with my business partner, and uh, I, I have some thoughts about it. I'm going to share, and I might actually find someone else to come on the show with me. I'm still searching. So if you've done a membership for a podcast community or really any kind of membership, and you want to come on on a Money, Money Monday uh, on April 18th, there we go, then come on, be a part of the show. Uh, it'll be tons of fun. And hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that share button. Just do all three of those. There's the call to action uh, for the show. Is subscribe to wherever you're watching this at. I uh, really appreciate it. And give us some feedback. If you are like Sid and you don't like my intro, let me know. And I'll probably respond the same way. I don't care. All right, go hit the record button. Go live. Do whatever you want to do as a creator. Create something great and change the world. Talk to you soon.